Hi friends, none of us is exempted from being hurt or offended in life. It's what we do with those grievances that matters. Let's learn how to be forgiving so that our prayers will not be hindered. Welcome to WilsonLiling.com and we would invite you to subscribe with us on podcasts in YouTube, Spotify or even Apple. And if you really like what you hear, could you please share it so that more people could be blessed. So let's look at today's lesson on making room for forgiveness. You know, God desires for us to experience personal freedom in Him in all aspects of our lives. That's why in Scripture it says in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. The key principle here is that, friends, let's seek to forgive those who may have sinned against us, offended us, grieved us, just as God has shown us forgiveness. As intercessors, as prayer warriors, we need to search our hearts for any issues that may resemble resentment so that we will not be imprisoned by offense and bitterness even though we may be seasoned prayer warriors. God's word remains true for all that no matter the circumstance surrounding the offense or wrong done against us. Christ's followers who fail to forgive may be plagued by undue confusion, frustration, depression even, plus other physical ailments for unforgiveness leaves the door wide open for the enemy to attack our lives. So how do we exercise forgiveness? As we allow God to work in our hearts, can I suggest to you a couple of things? Firstly, keep short accounts. Hebrews 12 verse 15 reminds us, See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. You see, bitterness starts out like a small little root that keeps getting deeper. Hence, it's important for us to keep short accounts before God. Let's not allow small resentment to build into larger ones within our hearts. We need to learn to forgive others quickly and fully. You see, unforgiveness imprisons us. Forgiveness sets us free. And wouldn't you want that? Forgiveness does not mean removing justice and accountability from those who may have wronged us. Instead, we are saying, God, we leave it in your courts, in your hands. That's why it means to keep short accounts before God. Secondly, entrust to God's vindication. God's word cautions us from trying to vindicate ourselves when we may have been falsely accused or wronged by others. The Lord knows our hearts and He knows the truth. Hebrews 4.13 reminds us, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. You know, in that spirit of humility and forgiveness, let's learn to trust God to be our vindicator. At times, we may have been misunderstood. At times, we may uh, have to deal with that misunderstanding or even address the false accusation. Yet, let's do so with humility, leaving room for the Lord to defend us from Him, from His part. We are to forgive so that we do not bear resentment. You know, some years back, I was at workforce in secular work and being one who was able to finish my work efficiently, I started helping in other parts of the division. Uh, but my boss who was directly supervising me, unfortunately could not understand that I was uh, able to finish and complete my work so fast and so easily and uh, therefore she lodged a complaint um, against me towards another higher boss and I was called in uh, to meet this high, much higher boss and to my shock and horror 
um, a lot of other things were said of me that were untrue. And I had to learn to, when I heard all that, I had to learn to forgive. I had to learn to say, God, you are my vindicator and uh, continue to uh, work under my present boss. And while you know, asking God, Lord, vindicate me, show to this much higher boss what I've been involved in and the work that I've completed. And to amazement, I had completed them much more than what was required of me. And the Lord vindicated me. At the end of it all, I, I, I chose to forgive um, my direct boss and ask the Lord to touch her heart. In fact, her, her heart was, uh, was so much, um, you know, uh, so open to, to reconciliation because she could see where she had gone wrong in her um, accusation towards me. So friends, it's so important that we learn to look to God in such times and not keep those things deep in our heart that could imprison us, but rather let's keep shining for Jesus, being a good example of forgiveness and mercy to those who may have wronged us. You know, there could be many reasons why that could have happened, but let's be wise. Just like Joseph in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, he chose to be forgiving in all those different occasions when where he had been wronged in so many ways. And because of that, the Lord honored him at the end of it all. Let's learn from his story. Thirdly, can I suggest to us, learn to be offense proof. You know, do remember as fallible people, we ourselves could have also offended others. It's not just about being hurt by others, but we ourselves being the ones causing uh, you know, unintentionally uh, hurt to others as well. Therefore, let's learn not to be easily offended. In John chapter 16, verse 1, it says, All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. In other words, so that we will not stumble and be offended, you know, in, in situations where things have happened in our lives. Let's not take on borrowed offense as well. The enemy uses grievances to create animosity, to bring division between people, between believers, and, and even amongst uh, unbelievers, uh, to bring people into captivity. Because if he could do that, people's lives would be crippled by fear, by uh, misunderstanding, by resentment, and that, cause, that can all cause us to shy away from having interaction with others, from shining for the Lord. So I want to encourage us, let's guard our hearts as intercessors. Pray this into the life of the church. You know, this is so crucial. Forgiving others is crucial to maintaining a healthy and intimate relationship with Jesus and with one another as well. Let's learn to be offense proof. Fourthly, choose to be forgiving. Forgiveness is the key to restoring relationship with Jesus and also with others. Matthew 6 verse 12 reminds us, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. You see, forgiveness teaches us to live with others. Forgiveness is an act of will. It's not about our emotions. It's not about how we feel, but it's about saying, God, I choose to yield to what your word says out of sincere obedience to God. And he himself, our God, will, I believe, transform us inside out where we would choose to forgive, where we would choose to, you know, again, be healed by God's grace and begin to function as God calls us to. God's forgiveness releases wholeness into our lives. You know, I remember this story of Corrie Ten Boon, a Dutch lady whose family uh, was so impacted by the Second World War when the Nazis occup uh, occupied, you know, uh, parts of Germany, Netherlands and so forth. And uh, she and her family were uh, instrumental in hiding some Jewish people uh, from captivity from the Germans at that time, the Nazis. And uh, 
Unfortunately, they were found out and they were taken into the uh, concentration camps where she lost her sister and also her dad. And all this would have brought a lot of uh, pain, hurt uh, into her heart. And after the Second World War, uh, she went back into Germany to share the hope that she received from Jesus uh, despite all that had taken place in her life. And in this particular meeting, she came face to face with one of the guards who imprisoned them, particularly her sister and who was part of the team that tortured many prisoners. And this particular elderly guard, um, you know, came up after the talk that she gave to her and said, Fräulein, you mentioned about your time in this camp in Germany. He said, I was one of the guards and I seek you for forgiveness for my part in that concentration camp. I'm sorry for hurting people, for causing so much pain and trauma to many lives. And he stretched forth his hand and asked her for forgiveness. Since then, he has given his life to Christ. And he said to her, will you forgive me? Now, I'm, I'm just uh, giving you an account of what took place. And Cory Ten Boon, the flesh, what was in her heart, the whole flashback of what took place came back to her because she lost her sister in that camp. It was very painful. Uh, for her and many others who have suffered so much. As she was pondering, you know, quietly in her heart, God spoke to her about forgiveness, reminded her that forgiveness is an act of will. It's not about how she felt. It's not about justice and all that, but it's about willingness to obey God because God has shown her to her his forgiveness. And so with a trembling hand, she stretched forth her right hand to clasp the hand of the very God amongst others who had tortured so many people. And she said, as she cried and teared, and so did the God, I forgive you. And that's when that warmth from the Lord, from the heavenlies, the warmth from the Lord just flow through her, through her, her right arm, her hand to this God. And they cried together and she chose to forgive this God for what had taken place years ago. It was an act of will, an act to forgive. Friends, we learn so much from Cory Ten Boon's testimony. Will you also do the same? If and when we may have been offended, if and when we may have been hurt so deeply, um, wh whether it's unintentional, whether it's intentional, would we choose to forgive? Because that is God's heart for us. That's God's command for us because we choose to yield to God's word, because we choose to take this as an act of our will, yielding to the will of our Father God in heaven. He has shown to us forgiveness through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we were lost in our sins, when we did not deserve any mercy at all, yet He chose to show mercy and forgiveness through His Son, Jesus Christ. Will we not learn to do likewise, just like Cory Ten Boon? So let's learn this so well, choose to be forgiving. And fifthly, can I suggest to us, turn accusation into prayer. You see, friends, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us before God, for our wrongdoing. He blames God to us, you know, when we perhaps we have prayed for something and we did not see come to pass or we prayed and prayed and something else nasty took place and 
it's so easy for the enemy to turn the whole table around to cause us to blame God for what had taken place. It's like, where are you God when this happened? Or even accusing us to others, playing in the minds of believers over and over again, turning it into accusations. And you know what? The chief of it all is the enemy. Or others towards us where we comes through our mind, you know, the words spoken, the actions, the facial, uh, you know, uh, situation that we remembered so well. And it comes playing and playing over again like a broken tape recorder or seeking to accuse us for our failures before God through condemning us, condemnation. God convicts, He doesn't condemn. He convicts us so that we may repent from our old ways and turn 180 degrees towards God and say, God, come, I repent before you. I seek to do what's right before you. I seek to have my heart cleansed by you. You know, learn to turn each accusation into prayer. That sets us free from the enemy's accusations because he no longer has a hold over us. He no longer has a foothold in our lives because that's what he chooses to do. And that's what, that if we continue on and let that resentment build up, it can be, you know, it's like the very thing that can cripple us from being effective for the Lord, from being ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And these are days where we need to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. As there's so much happening in society, in the world, as darkness looms even in a greater degree, you know, we need to let God's light shine through us so that His righteousness, His ways would become so apparent to all and bring people out of darkness into His glorious and marvelous light. Friends, as prayer warriors, let's be so. James 2 verse 13 says, Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful, mercy triumphs over judgment. Can we be like that? Let God's mercy triumph over us instead of us taking matters into our own hands and keep those matter issues, bitterness, resentment building up into our lives. We don't want that because you know, remember the scripture says, God is looking for people with pure hearts, clean hands. That's what we need to be. That's what we need to rely on God and say, yes, Lord, help us be so. You know, rejoice in those opportunities to show mercy to others rather than acting according to strict justice. And I had to learn this as well. In ministry, there are many, many things that could come in into our daily lives. And if we were to accumulate all this, boy, the excess baggage that we carry on our shoulders in our hearts would put us down, drain us spiritually and therefore make us ineffective for the Lord. You know, in Christ, let's learn to find freedom in Christ through forgiveness and be made whole in God. And that's what God desires for us, even as seasoned intercessors, even as seasoned prayer warriors, because we are never exempted from any of this. In the previous podcast, I talked about letting God search our hearts. In this podcast, I'm looking into times when we may have been hurt and that's when we need to let go of those hurts and resentment so that our prayers will not be hindered. You know, prayers are powerful weapons given by God, long range weapons, short range weapons, by given by the Lord to break down the enemy's stronghold, to tear down the enemy's attempts to, to, you know, to infiltrate into our Christian life and a Christian witness. And that's why he seeks to put all these things in our hearts and lives so that prayers would not be our prayers. You know, when we are laden with all these things, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness would render us ineffective. The enemy knows that. And that's why we as God's people, especially in these seasons where things are happening across the world, 
all the more we need to shine as God's people. And one of the ways is by making room for forgiveness. So friends, may your lives be blessed as we seek to honour what God's Word says. Amen.